The video you're about to watch has been designed to take you deeper, higher, and wider into Yahweh. Enjoy, and please subscribe. Thank you. Father, we just want to glorify and magnify your name. And we are reminded through this song, it is about the seven spirits. It's about engaging with each individual being, Father, that, that sits at your throne. We've got the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, it's Yahweh. Part of the governance of that, that the dimension of who you are, Father. We've got the seven spirits. And we're beginning to understand that they are key to our growth. They are key to our position in you. They are key to engaging the living letters. They are, they are that dimension of who you are that opens us up and pours into us all that's in your kingdom, all that you desire for us to walk in. So, Father, as we begin to engage with what's available, Father, as we go into all that you've opened up for us, Lord, I ask you in the name of Yeshua, that you will tap into each heart here tonight and break our spirit man open, Father. Let, let who we are engage with you in the heavens in its full capacity. And be reminded that you have called us up there to live and move and have our being in you. To sit in our capacity of, as, as who we are in your image. In the yard, the hay, the vav, the hay, in the ox, the lion. Eagle man, for as we step into all of who you are, we begin to remind ourselves through your sweet, precious Holy Spirit that you have called us and destined for us as your people to, to go back in, to go, to go back into who you are, Father. We begin to understand that the Hebraic letters, the ancient Hebrew language, well, that was pictorial has dimensions of revelation. As a matter of fact, we're beginning to understand that each one of these letters is literally a fiery gate that we get have the capacity as spirit beings in the kingdom of heaven to go into and dimensions of revelation regarding who you are opens up to us. So Father, in the next couple of weeks, I want to ask that you will bring a revelation regarding these letters to us, Father. We love you, we praise you, we honor you, and thank you for who you are, my King. Thank you that we can step into you and we can live from out of your throne room, from out of your faces, from out of your kingdom, and legislate that image into creation. Father, we love you, we praise you, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You guys comfortable there? You can come sit there if you want. I mean, whatever, but I'll show you back. <laughs> I think I was more comfortable. Yeah. Okay, well, I've been there, trying to put this away, put, it, put this aside for a while because uh, it was going to take a while. But yeah, I was reminded that um, in New Orleans, it felt to me that the people were just not really getting it. I don't know why. For me, it was just, I almost clicked everything instantly. But as soon as I started teaching the letters, it's almost like it opened up for them and revelation was poured into them. I would urge you, um, the song we just listened to is uh, Seven Spirits of the Lord from the Rockamobile. Uh, it's Di Dimensions Alive that sings it. Um, it's a Hebraic song, so it's sang in Hebrew. Um, it's about the seven spirits and the spirit of the Lord. It's an incredible song, but it represents something that I would urge you to engage. Um, out of the Rockamobile, they've also written a book called uh, um, Friends of Eber. Now, if you don't have the book, I would urge you to get the book. You can get it on their website. I think it's uh, rockamobile.org. It's like $10. Uh, it's very nice. Um, I have it myself, and I enjoy it thoroughly. I'm not teaching out of it. I have uh, my own notes from the letters that I enjoy. But it is incredible, and I would urge you to get it. It will help you a lot. Is there, any, is there more light in this room by any chance? No, is that it? Still like I'm in the dark. <laughs> Is that them? Oh, yeah, that didn't work. Okay, anyway. How are you guys doing? <laughs> I'm trying to focus yet. I don't know. Okay. I absolutely, for myself, over the last seven years, I had to go back into one encounter to get revelation uh, on these letters. I remember being uh, in a place in the kingdom of heaven where Yahweh in his full capacity came up to me and gave me a hug. Um, and it was very strange. It was the very first time I stepped into the kingdom of heaven. It was a throne room experience. It was in, in, I was in awe and I was in wonder and I was terrified. 
I was taught that you can't go into the kingdom of heaven unless you're dead. I was taught that you can't see God and live. And so being in this place in the spirit where I'm seeing my God in his full force, I'm engaging with him and literally go into him as he hugs me, I was fearful. I was, I was freaked out. But I also very quickly realized that all of that wasn't true. That we misunderstood it. And as a spirit being, I have the capacity to carry all of his glory in me. That's the image that I was created in. It is my, my, my soul and my flesh that needs to be transformed, and it has to go through the process of glorification. My spirit man in Christ, seated in him, in the heavenlies, is completely glorified and infused with who he is. But I remember when I went into him, I realized that this is the place where I want to live and move and have my being. I remember for the first time, it felt like I could breathe for the very first time. But I remember going back into that part of Yahweh because I was so intrigued by it. It was so incredible to be in him. Because yeah, you, can, you can understand it when you read it in the Bible, but it's not something we in the natural can perceive. Because I can't really physically go into anybody. You know, it's not, it's not quite what I perceive. You know? So when the Bible talks about becoming one with him, I have a, a measure of perception that I can go with, but not in the measure that he's called me to step into him. Because it's spirit being into spirit being that we can physically... See, if I, if I do this, we clash. I can't put my hands into each other. I mean, I can go as far as this, but it's really just intertwining. Wow. It's not physically going into each other, if that makes sense. Um, but in the spirit, it's different. Because spirit and spirit can become one. You can literally go into each other. And going into Yeshua, into, into Yahweh at this specific point, I begin to realize every time I went back in, I would see fiery gates. And in the beginning, I had no idea what these fiery gates were. It was almost like they were calling me, like fiery explosions uh, going out and then wanting me to come in, if that makes any sense. And it was pretty freaky. And I remember eventually, as I was going deeper into the teachings that my mentors were teaching me, I realized that these uh, fiery gates is actually the living letters. If you study the Hebrew culture, you'll understand that these Hebrew letters are not just ordinary letters. It's not like the alphabet we understand, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Uh, and of course, in our English language, uh, A, B, and C doesn't have any meaning. It only gets a meaning when you add them in a certain order and it spells a word. Then it still doesn't have the meaning of the letter, it now has the meaning of the word that you spelled. But the Hebrew letters, but the, the ancient Hebrew letters, has a completely different connotation to it. As a matter of fact, each letter has a dimension of Yahweh in it. We have to understand that when Yahweh spoke into creation, that's what came out of him. It's these living letters, these fiery gates that were protruded into creation and began to form what he spoke into place. And we get to go into these beings. That is, the, that is part of the living word. It's part of the written word. It's part of the spoken word. That's why if you want to engage in your, 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 your written word, you want to go into the original Hebrew. And of course, that's why if we understand the translations that we're studying right now, a lot of the Hebrew was taken out and it was put into a Greek perception and understanding. So that's why the Father is, is, is wanting us to go into the Greek, uh, into the Hebrew. We're not to become Hebrews. I mean, do you understand that? I don't want to be Jewish. And I don't want to be Greek or Hebrew either. I want to be who I am. I want to love Yahweh, but I have what I have a perception of a culture and the meaning of what he spoke of when he mentioned certain things in the Word. I mean, we have done uh, in the name of Yeshua, Yah. So that's the Yod, the Hey, the Shem, the Vav, the Hey. That's four of the Hebrew letters that we engage and we're beginning to understand that I get to go into the name. <coughs> so if I can get into the name, it's different than speaking the name like we've been taught. So I'm in the name, which means I live from out of who he is into creation. <coughs> so when we're looking at the living letters, that's the idea. The Father's desire is to open you up for a greater dimension of revelation so that you can get to know him better. We engage with the seven spirits so they can place us in a position that we as sons in his kingdom need to grow into, become kings. And of course, we walk with the seven spirits to a point where the Father begins to teach us, him, us Himself. And of course, the idea behind all of this is to open you up for a greater revelation and insight regarding who Yahweh is. Wow. Each letter is a symbol 
full of many uh, inner meanings, from literal, straightforward meanings to deeper spiritual meanings. We're beginning to understand that because it came out of Yahweh, it represents a dimension of who He is. So the more you spend time, now you can get some of these books on these letters, has 20 pages on each letter. That's how much depth there is in it. We're not going that deep, it's really just doing the basics. But the idea is that you get to go and study and meditate a different language. It, it changes your perception. I remember when I was studying theology, some of the subjects is Hebrew and Greek. I did not understand anything. I mean, I passed those subjects, but I didn't engage it because it wasn't a focus of the teachers. It wasn't to the understanding of what I have today, the importance of engaging with something living other than what I perceive. You know, when Yahweh says the living word, all we think of as our religious mind binds us is Jesus. But Jesus is much more in the kingdom of heaven than what we perceive because of what came out of him. And of course, the Hebrew culture, whatever is in the beginning will be in the end. Right? So the end and the beginning is the same, the Aleph and the Tav, the Alpha and the Omega. We begin to understand that Yahweh has spoken something uh, into creation. And as, he, uh, as John 1 tells us, Jesus is the one that created everything. And everything was created for him. But in the same breath, we're beginning to understand that Yeshua, Jesus Christ, is uh, the Godhead. It's part of it in its full capacity. It's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And that is Yahweh. The Yah, the Hey, the Vav, the Hey. Understanding the letters provides essential insight into deeper meaning of the Bible. Because the Father wants to bring you to the place of mysteries. Like we have, we have received some milk. Mostly milk. We've received some, some meat, but we understand that there's another dimension to the Word, and that's the mysteries and the secrets. That's the hiddenness within the Word the Father wants the Ecclesia to begin to engage. And of course, that's what we're busy doing, right? Yeah. A company of people out of Isaiah 2 is going into the kingdom of heaven, operating out of Zion, and we are beginning to see and have insight out of what the Father speaks into us. And remind you, the Father uses infused knowledge, which means as I go into Him, I get to perceive and understand and receive everything that He wants me to download. Now that basically comes from this. If we understand that the high priest would have to walk through the veil. Now, your Greek mindset tells you that he has a little door or a little slip in the, in the, in the um, veil that he could push open and he could go through. But in reality, what had to happen is he had to physically walk through it. So it's a trans relocation, it is a, um, I don't even know what word we could put there, but he had to walk through the veil. And, and what happens to the veil, that every priest that um, passed on, his garment will be sewn to the veil. You guys know that? Wow. So eventually it was like hundreds of, it was very thick and very heavy because of the priests and the, 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 their garments that sewn to this veil. So as the priest goes into the Holy of Holies, meaning walking through the veil, what he had the capacity to do is walk through each and every generation of priests before him. So as he walks through, he gains the knowledge, the insight, the understanding, the revelation that they carry as he walks through into the Holy of Holies. And so this is kind of where it comes from. As I go into these living letters, it's like the high priest walking through the previous generation's revelation and insight. Yahweh spoke this into being, He came out of Him, and I have the capacity to, as I go back into Him, gain all the revelation and knowledge that's in this living Word, that is not just Yeshua, but it is even, <clears throat> even a deeper depth in what we get to engage. Okay. After studying the letters in depth, it is not uncommon for many people to feel that the letters express some direct spiritual communication that goes beyond words. I have personally realized every time I engage with one of the living letters, um, I can feel the warmth and the revelation I'm gaining. Mm -hmm. And a matter of fact, I want to go as far as to say that much of the infused knowledge that I've ministered on and things that I, I feel in my heart coming out of me when I minister that I haven't gained in studying or meditating on comes out as I engage with the living letters. Now also in the same breath, remind yourself that every time you go into the Father, every time you're engaging with Yahweh Himself, that is partly you engaging with the letters because it's in Him. So I don't have to consciously be aware of engaging with a letter for me to actually physically go in to one of the letters as they call into me. My Father is a consuming fire, meaning that when I'm in Him, I'm going to experience that explosive 
uh, fiery gates that wants to bring me to a higher, deeper place in Him. Looking into the deeper meanings of the letters can transform and deepen our learning and can lead us to deeper levels of spiritual experiences. So it's, it's that desire the Father has for you to go to a deeper, higher, wider place in Him. Not just reading surfacely what the Word of God says. Because we have to be reminded that each one of the translations we have has taken partly away from what the Father intended to say. So when you go back to the original and you engage in the original content out of the pictorial letters of the Hebrew language, you get a different meaning out of what the Father wanted to say, if that makes any sense. Yeah. You, study for, uh, uh, you can study this for many years to realize the great inner spiritual meanings of each letter. So it's important to realize that the, 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 the article is entirely, uh, the, the, this um, article is a tiny entry point into a deeper field study, which uh, could be followed for a lifetime. This is what I've understood. I've got these notes that I found, and I, I really had to add much to it as I've engaged to a deeper level, but I've realized the little bit that I have is not even touching the surface. This is the very basic, and you can go much deeper. The idea the Father has for each one of us is to begin to perceive and see. Because you can't engage something you can't see, right? You can do it by faith, and that's probably where most of us are. You know? But we want to go into Him and begin to engage each one of these letters individually. Out of these letters is also where you get your new name. <clears throat> now, I'm not going into too much detail regarding that, but the Father's desire for you is to begin to understand and perceive that He has made available to you dimensions and realms of wisdom, revelation, knowledge, insight that you get to engage. Each one of these let letters represents a dimension of who He is. It's not to be worshipped, it's not to be taking any glory from Him, and I've said this several times, it is impossible to take glory from Yahweh. Right? Not, not, not the demonic, not the angelic, not any other created being on this planet can take glory from Him. It is impossible. We have made many statements like that, but it is just not possible, right? I mean, it's not possible. <laughs> okay, so we have um, the Aleph, Aleph, Beit, Gimel, Dalet, He, Vav, Zayin, Heit, Tate, Yad, Kaf, Lamed, Mem, Nun, Shamek. Now I'm not pronouncing all these letters right, I'm sure. Ayin, because I'm not Hebrew. Peh, Sade, uh, that might have been wrong. Kaf, Raish. Shin, and then we have Taf. Okay, so that's the 22 letters. They say there's some others that we can engage, but I want to just use the 22 letters that the alphabet consists of, that has been taken and put into place. And if we begin to understand the Father has been longing for a people that will go deeper than just what we read. Now, I've said this before. Now, all of a sudden, we have... What's available to us as spirit beings, I call it the spoken word. That which was spoken in the atmosphere that was never written. Now as a spirit being, I get to go in beyond time and space and I get to experience that which was said. Now what I love personally, what I love to do, and I know how weird it sounds, but what I love to do is to go into the word of God, that which is written, and engage the walk of Yahweh or Yeshua when he was engaging with his disciples the things that wasn't written down. Now part of all those things that he was spoken, even before he started creation, the things he said to the angelic, the infused knowledge that was given to them as they were created, those are words spoken into the atmosphere that is still available to us today. Now we don't understand that because that's not something that's ever been taught. Now as a spirit being, I get to go into that which is spoken into the atmosphere because the words of God does not return. It continues to break into the atmosphere. He's a powerful, awesome, majestic God. So the Aleph indicates the oneness and unity of the Creator. It is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and it signifies number one. 
the oneness. What I love about this specific letter is that it teaches you about the unique, this, the, uh, the unique dimension of who Yahweh is in the Trinity and the unity that he operates out of to such an extent that there is one being but three different entities. Now, as a, as a spirit being that has a soul, lives in a body, I have only begun to step into the unity that I'm supposed to have. You know, we are born into sin, we are messed up through our teachers and our parents and our TV stations and our friends and those who perceive and understand and learn in a, a world that's consumed with sin. Then we get born again or born from above and we have to re-transform uh, who we are through the engagement in the heavens with my spirit man downloading uh, the things that's infused in him so that my soul and my body can begin to understand and perceive things. Then I divide soul and spirit, I divide body and, and soul so there's three entities that can get unity, reunited in Christ. <laughs> you got it, okay? Yeah. It's reunited in Christ and then only I begin to learn how to operate in unity as a spirit being. I have to change who I am because I am born a human being, then I get born from above and my, my primary being takes over and he has to reunite the rest of who I am into his full capacity. This letter opens up a dimension of revelation regarding the oneness and the unity of our Creator. And to understand how he functions and how he operates as one. Because we still have the, the mentality, because we operate on this side of the veil, that Jesus is just the Son of God. Right. But very quickly, we're going to have to begin to understand that in the kingdom of heaven, He's not the Son of God. He's represented as the Son of God, but He's an entity of the deity and full capacity as God, as any other part of who Yahweh is. Right. It hints that beyond the illusion of separation and duality is underlying oneness. That nothing is separate and the Creator is the source of everything. That in itself can take you a couple of years to perceive. But really the Father just wants us to, as we engage in these letters, He wants you to begin to see that the Aleph represents a dimension of all that came out of Him and the understanding of who He is in what He gives to creation, coming out into a place where He literally projects all of who He is in the heavens and we get to go in and perceive all of who He is. We were taught that you can only know a measure of God. Now, for me, it's only been seven years, but I have been blown away by the amount of information the Father has given me. Now, also understand, we only have a three-dimensional perception. So, in the Kingdom of Heaven, they talk about 36 different dimensions, and there could be more, because it's an infinite God. So, we have to go into the Kingdom of Heaven to perceive more. We get to look at different angles. And on this side of the veil, I've got the front, the back, the sides, the left, the right. I've got the top and the bottom. That's six. In the kingdom of heaven, there's multi-dimensional sides that I can engage. And of course, the Father opens himself up, so I get to go in and see all of who he is. Which is a download of information that my spirit can perceive, but my soul can't engage. Slowly but surely, as my soul changes, and that's also why we take communion, right? Take communion so that the DNA of who I am in the natural can change and be affected by my spirit to the full extent. How are you guys doing? Mm -hmm. The shape of the Aleph is two yards, one above and one below, with a diagonal line, the Vav, between them, representing the higher world and the lower world, with the Vav separating um, and connecting the two. So engaging Aleph literally takes you to the revelation of how to live as an alien in the earth and operate from out of the kingdom of heaven at the same time. Because at the moment we have an understanding of who we are on this side of the veil because we've been on this side of the veil for several years. Worshipping God, studying the word, going to church, seeing signs, wonders and miracles on this side of the veil, wanting to push through, we'll see a vision, maybe have an understanding here, a perception here, a dream a dream and we get an interpretation and it sounds great. But now we get to live in the kingdom of heaven as spirit beings, engaging to the full capacity of what the Father allows us to walk in according to our desire. 
We have said this several times, your gateway in to anything in the kingdom of heaven is desire. And the Father's desire for you is to understand both worlds. But the understanding I have, my, my own personal understanding, is that I first have to engage the kingdom of heaven, going up into the kingdom of heaven to have an understanding of where I need to live and move and have my being. Understanding how the, that kingdom functions so that I can then legislate the things of that kingdom into the earth, into this kingdom. That's having a full understanding of the high world and the low world. Understanding this is the low world and the kingdom of heaven is the high world. Yeah. And the Father's desire is to bring that kingdom into this world. Yeah. And He's not going to do it. We are the ones that have to do it. Mm -hmm. How are you guys doing? Right. The Aleph also represents uh, the creation of something from nothing. You know, I look at the earth today and of course we can't really perceive this because we were born into it and it was just there. But there was a time where there was nothing. And of course, the Father, in engaging the others, you begin to understand the power that He carries, the, the omnipotence of this majestic, beautiful God, the awfulness of who He is. And the, 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 the fearful thing about this is that He has created us in His image, meaning that we have the capacity, and I know that not many, if any, has really had the capacity to engage this, but I know the Father has made it very clear to me, and He said to me once, uh, that I walk with him in the heavens. He said to me, my son, there will be a day where you will be able to bring into the physical realm that which you engage in the spirit. Mm. Now, I don't know anybody that's actually physically done that yet, but let me tell you, that it, it'll be a day. Actually, actually, I've listened to a, um, a young man share a testimony where he would um, go into a park with a, a preacher friend of his, and this guy would lift his hand up in the air, and pull down a scroll, a physical scroll, and start reading it. And the people in the park would get born again and freaked out by this incredible thing. And I really believe the Father, as we engage this, that's kind of where He wants us to walk into, to begin to understand the faith we walk in is a dimension of this. Because our faith is created to get you to the place where you take what's not there and you create it with your faith. Yeah. You know, if my Father is a creator, and how many of you understand? That's something I believe to begin to walk in. Yeah. And I really believe that He wants to open our hearts for this so that we can have full fruition of what He's desired yeah. as we engage in these letters. Now the Aleph is the very first letter. There's 21 other letters that we get to engage. And each one of these letters, it's your responsibility to find out as much information about them as you possibly can. It is the essence of the essential symbol of the beginnings. An ultimate reality that cannot be talked about. It's timeless, spaceless, and it's present everywhere. Doesn't that sound like an attribute of Yahweh? Yeah. I mean, here's this awesome, majestic God that we can talk about in a measure, but let's be honest now, everything we have had to say about Him is just a very extreme small portion of who He really is. Right. Because He's an infinite God, and we don't really get to engage all of who He is. Now, there's a company of people that's operating from out of Him, saying things about Him that's never been heard or seen or even written or read before. And people are going, well, you can't say stuff like that because it's not in the Bible. Well, let's just be honest. The Bible is just a measure of the Word. That's right. And I guess the church is slowly but surely beginning to understand that. We can't always talk about this God, but as I engage the Aleph, I get to perceive a greater realm of who He is. Because He opens up to me all of what I need to engage according to what's written on my scroll. Now, what's written on my scroll uh, tells me how deep I can go into Yahweh. Now, that's just a small portion of it, but according to what I agreed to, I get to go into certain places within the kingdom of heaven to engage certain things so that I can have the revelation of what I need to do in the, in, in the earth. And of course, that's just my, my, my portion in this part of creation. We have an eternal purpose that goes into deeper places in the heavens. Wow. And of course, the Father has given us coherency with Him, meaning that we are fully created and designed in His image to do what He does, because His desire for us is to take everything that He's in charge of into fruition. I don't know, sometimes that scares us. <laughs> And the most of the church don't want to hear that. It's timeless. It teaches us about the timelessness of Yahweh. It's one thing that I've been very interested in is the, the timeline. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I, as I operate in Christ, 
I'm reminded that science has actually proven that if you can operate at the speed of light, you will operate outside of time and space. <clears throat> Engaging with the Aleph, I've personally noticed how a revelation regarding uh, timelessness opens up. You know, I've always thought, well, time, according to our perception, happens from the beginning, so it's a horizontal line that starts at a specific point and ends at a specific point. Because I'm born at a specific time and I die at a specific time. That's what we perceive. Right. But when I go into a place where there's timelessness, time, uh, lack of time and space, or no time and space, everything happens at once. Wow. That's why I can take the living word, or I can take the word which is perceived out of the mouth of God, that which is written, that which is spoken, and of course the living. Mm -hmm. And I get to go into it to engage it as it happens. That we can only do as spirit beings. Uh, natural, I can't perceive that because I physically can't go into uh, my yesterday. I physically can't go into my tomorrow. I am stuck in my today. But my spirit has the capacity to go into my, my yesterday, and my spirit can go into my tomorrow. And of course, the Father's desire as we engage the other is so that we begin to understand that we are supposed to live today in our tomorrow. Because if you've seen you tomorrow, today, then nothing in your today can take you out. Right. Mm -hmm. That's part of timelessness. Yeah. And of course, in Ephesians, that's the, the lance that's not spoke of. Right. That's the very part, last part of your armor. Where you get a lance, the lance is used to take the enemy out before he gets to you. Right. And I'm, reminded, I'm reminding you that if you know what your tomorrow holds today then nothing can stop you from getting there daily. Mm -hmm. right. Which means eternal life. Mm -hmm. wow. Not eternal life like going to heaven, but you will not die. Mm -hmm. You guys okay? Yeah. yeah. And of course, spaceless. Spaceless it freaks me out because I don't really perceive it. But I remember lying uh, in, a, in a church on the floor just soaking, and I was really just engaging the heavens, and my spirit man was... It just shifted from one kingdom to another. I didn't go up anywhere. I was still in the same room, but the kingdom of heaven was right there in the little church that I was at. It was not all that little, probably sit about 250 people. But it was in that room. There was the 100 million angels at the throne. There was the 24 elders, the, 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 the four living creatures, the angelic around that was around the throne. It was incredible, but it was all in that little space. It was very strange. Now, if we don't understand that, because what we see is the space that we're in. But in the kingdom of heaven, all of the kingdom of heaven can fit into my palm. But in the same breath, all of who I am uh, can fit in this... I don't even know how to say that. It's just freaking me out. <laughs> and of course, the idea that Yahweh is everywhere. Now, it sounds easy for us to perceive, but at this moment, most of us still have to get the revelation that I'm in two places at the same time. Because he says I'm in Christ and seated in heavenly places. Right. But in reality, I'm standing in front of you in Lafayette, and we're just in a small room. Mm -hmm. But according to the Word of God, I'm in two different places right now, and I'm not aware of it. Right. And so the idea is to become aware of it, and to understand that when you're in the kingdom of heaven, your spirit being can engage in multiple places at the same time, can engage in multiple things at the same time. To understand Yahweh has the capacity to engage with you and with me and with you and with you and with the rest of the world all at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> and I shared this last night. I remember going into an engagement with the Father and he was taking me into a room. It was a feast of uh, goodies. We were just sitting, talking, having a great time. And it was just the four of us. And that sounds weird already. But I remember as, as, as I shifted into Holy Spirit and we shifted into Yeshua, we shifted into the Father, the Father took me into creation and He literally took me in the blink of an eye into every household, every family, every man, every woman, every child on the planet and He downloaded their lives into me. Now that is something I cannot perceive in the natural world. What? Because in the blink of the eye it was more than, what, I don't know, six point something billion people we have on the planet. And for me to walk from one, uh, one city to another will take me days, or if not months. But to travel in the Spirit was just incredible. To realize that within the Father, I can be everywhere at the same time. Mm -hmm. Now that understanding we don't per se have yet, but as I have engaged personally with the Aleph, 
doors and gateways regarding who Yahweh is and the capacity of revelation that's in him has begun to attach itself to me. Wow. You guys okay? Yeah. It is the one that cannot be divided. <laughs> Representing perfection beyond human comprehension. You know, if you look at Yahweh according to the Bible and our perception that we have of life and where we act, how many of you understand? He looks like a mean God in the Old Testament. Then he does things that we don't understand. He allows things that we don't understand. Um, Rachel, for example, she lies like a dog, and it's, yeah. it's counted as righteousness. You know, we don't perceive that. I mean, if I tell a lie today, it's a lie. She tells a lie, and it's called righteousness. You know, it depends on your motive. But we're getting to understand the Father operates out of a place of perfection that we cannot understand. And of course, the church didn't help much with that. They were teaching us what we could do, should do, would do. There was a big do-do list, and this is sin, and that's not sin, and this is right, and that's wrong. Why? Because we're eating of the tree of good and evil. Right. And of course, his desire for us is to understand what we should be eating of. Right. Uh, and these letters have opened up realms and dimensions for us to take of what, in who Yahweh is, and to eat of it. Each one of these letters has the capacity to equip you in everything you need for right now. You say, well, does that exclude the Word? No, it helps you to study the Word of God. Because instead of just reading it the way it is, start taking the Hebrew letters and engaging it like that. It opens up revelation beyond what you can fathom and understand. As a matter of fact, a lot of my studies in the Word has literally enhanced its revelation just through taking one or two words and taking the Hebrew meaning of that Word and breaking it up, engaging with the letters that it's composed of. It changes our understanding of what the Father intended to say. And of course, if you study out of the Interlinear Bible, you will see how it literally changes what the, what the um, New King James, the Old King James actually says. Even any of the other translations, because the one Hebrew word can have several different meanings. And the one interpreting it just take a meaning or take a word that he thinks fits best. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> how are you guys doing? And I don't know how long I've been busy already. <laughs> a moment. A moment. I don't want to carry on for too long because I, uh, I want you to take each letter and then engage it for two or three, two weeks, the, the two weeks that I'm not here. That's the idea of this, is that you go study because I'm just giving you a small portion of what you can engage. And of course, you've got the Friends of Eber, which was, it comes out of intense revelation. Man and woman that's engaged with these letters physically in the kingdom of heaven, and they have an insight that's slightly different than this. Um, I believe that the Father wants you to personally engage with and understand it. Doesn't take any glory away from Yahweh. Understand that you're not worshiping something other than God. His desire is for you to go into all of the Word, and we have perceived the Word to only be that which is written, right? But we are slowly but surely begin to understand that when Yahweh says, "I am the Word." Every dimension, every area, every part of who He is, in all of creation, I get to engage because that's part of the Word. Right. And that's exactly what these letters are for. It's there for you to engage. And of course, you find them personally and individually within the Father. It's going into Him, allowing Him to pour into you, allowing Him to open up uh, parts of who He is so that you can go deeper into intimacy, relationship, and covenant with Him. He wants you to know Him in levels and areas that this little love letter cannot take you to. Mm -hmm. And I know people that know this letter off by, or this book off by heart. Matter of fact, one of my, one of my family members, which he became a family member in, in marriage, he was in jail for like seven years. And in that time, he got born again, and he began to study the Word of God. Matter of fact, by the time he left the, the jail, um, he knew the Bible from Genesis to Revelations off by heart. Now, how he did that, I don't know, but I, I, I remember that he still, if I, when he spoke to me, there was so much error in his theology mm -hmm. because he just had the knowledge of the Word. Yeah. Yeah. He just knew this. He didn't know the one that was in it. Right. 
And we begin to understand that it's not about the book as much as what it is the one uh, in the book. Right. And if this is just one portion of what is made available to us, then we have to engage all of what's there. Yeah. Like so slowly but surely we begin to understand well, we're only engaged in the in the um, the milk and the meat. But within that which is written, there's mysteries. Yeah. And the Hebrew letters opens up the mysteries and begins to en enhance us in our understanding regarding the mysteries that's in that which is written. But then we still have the spoken which we haven't even touched yet. Wow. Now also remind yourself that part of the spoken is that which is written and illuminated to you. Right. So the Father gives you some scripture in the Bible and it becomes illuminated to you. Right. That's spoken work to you directly from Yahweh. But in the same breath, there's words spoken into the atmosphere by men of God, women of God, saints of old, um, angelic beings, uh, the Father Himself, Yeshua, Holy Spirit, and we now get to go into that. Now, I, mean, I don't know if anybody of you in this room have ever done that, but it is my, it's mind-blowing. It is, it's it's mind-altering engagements when you step into something that's in the atmosphere, in the earth, that you can all of a sudden hear because you're a spirit being, but you couldn't have heard it previously. For me personally, that's one of the most incredible things. I thought I love going into the Word, into the Bible itself. One of my favorite things to do is to go into um, a, a, a place where Yeshua says to his disciples, I'm going to go up to the mountain to pray. And then they stay behind, or they get into the boat, and they leave, and then he goes and does something by himself. I love to go into those times where he's alone with the Father. You know, there's this... There's, there's, uh, the series of Yeshua <clears throat> doing miracles after his disciples leave. And that the miracles that's done in the time that they have left is so much different. And we get to go into all of that. We get to go see in the Spirit what's available, what's there that wasn't seen, that wasn't revealed, that wasn't written down, that wasn't spoken of, that wasn't seen by anyone else. We get to go into it because the Father has already released something that's living and I, because I'm a spirit being, living in Him, I get to go into everything that came out of Him. Wow. Wow. You guys okay? Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to make sense of everything that's inside of me. As it comes out, I, I really want you to understand that the Father has made something available for the Ecclesia that's been available for several hundreds of years, but we've never engaged. You know, I have uh, several friends that studies the Hebrew. Matter of fact, I don't know exactly what you call them. It's uh, uh, mosaic, 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 mosaic Christians. They, I don't know exactly what they do. Messianic, messianic, messianic Christians. I love, I love that idea of going into the culture of the Hebraic language and the Old Testament and the, 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 the Judaistic uh, theology and where that culture comes from. Uh, I love the fact that, that the Hebrew language in its use has such power. Like we say shalom, engaging in each of those living letters that comes out of that word and the projection of what it means and the establishment of the glory of the Father and the alignment that that a little word brings. I can't, if I say peace, it sounds great, but again, it's just English letters put together to make a word. If I say shalom, it is the living letters projected in a place that literally brings uh, creation into alignment. Yeah. Because it comes out of the mouth of Yahweh and it projects out of the son of Yahweh into creation. Are you guys okay? I'm trying to make sense of this. It's kind of... So what we're going to be doing over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to try and do each one of these letters. This was my favorite letter, one of my favorite letters. Um, of course, my, the letters in my name is my favorite letters. <laughs> But uh, I enjoy the Aleph because it is the beginning. It's that place where the Father wants you to start. Get to know Him. Get to know the Creator. Get to understand the oneness, the unity that He operates out. Because He is the image that I'm created in. I need to get to understand the oneness of who I am in Christ and how I operate in full unity with who I am. Because we've been so separated and so divided in who we are, that we can ever function in the full capacity as one created in His image. But slowly but surely the Father is beginning to reveal to us as sons and daughters who we are personally, who I am, body, soul, spirit, primary spirit that has, is supposed to have my soul and my body and live in my spirit. And understanding of how to get to that place, how deep the Father wants me to uh, walk in Him and of course understanding that 
in him I have the capacity and revelation to project myself as a spirit being into creation as one with dominion and authority. Wow. And so slowly and surely the Father is bringing us to understanding. I believe over the next couple of weeks I'm going to take each one of these letters and I'm going to break it up into smaller portions like I did tonight and hopefully we will begin to understand. So what I would urge you to do over the next couple of weeks is I want you to take this letter, um, go study it online, you know, Google it. You know, I've got very basic information. Google it and let, let the Father take you on a journey. So every time you engage with Yahweh, go into the, to the Aleph. Let it begin to direct you into each portion that it represents. Mm -hmm. So you get to go deeper into all of what the Father has for you. And the idea of these fiery gates is so that you can engage in revelation and insight and begin to get to understand the Father, begin to understand uh, Yahweh in a greater measure. Because in the, that which he's spoken is much revelation. Of course, we haven't tapped into any of it. We've got a very mild um, form of revelation insight that we've been given and small portions of what we've engaged in the heavens that we're now beginning to understand. But there's so much more. And for me personally, I've realized that these living letters is a gateway into a greater insight and understanding of what the Father wants me to understand and perceive regarding who He is. Wow. Let's stand. Wow. You guys okay? Awesome. Yeah. Well, Father, we just want to thank you and praise you. And as we engage these letters, Father, let's, let's just begin to see it. Because I know that it's quite out there for most of us. It's very difficult to perceive and understand, well, how can you engage a letter? It doesn't make sense because our natural capacity cannot perceive a letter that's living, that comes out of Yahweh, the creator of all things. He has spoken something. He's, his speech is alive. Everything that comes out of him has the capacity to change and reunite and form and build and break down and align whatever it touches. And we get to go into him where each one of these letters, the fiery gates are, that wants to touch, change, mold, fold us into a greater place, into deeper revelation of who he is. And so, Father, as we engage with the Aleph this, this week or this next two weeks, I pray that you will give us revelation regarding who it is, Father. What we get to see as we go into this fiery gate. What it reveals. How it opens us up to engage you in a greater way, to perceive you in a greater manner, and to begin to understand you in the ways that you want to reveal yourself to us. Father, we love you, we praise you. I thank you for everything you do. I thank you for everything you've made available to us as your sons and daughters in this crazy time of revelation, Father. This crazy time where we're beginning to see things and perceive things that we never thought possible to understand or have revelation of. So tonight, Lord, everyone in this room, I ask that there will be an understanding regarding the letters. Just perceive the fact that they are not just normal letters. Like the I, A, the B, the C, the D, that are living letters that have perceived out of you that we get to go into. So, Father, I ask you to open us up for it. Let's begin to perceive it and understand it and have full-on revelation regarding each one of these 22 letters. We love you. We praise you. We thank you for who you are. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen.